All right, video three, still uh, on these issues. They're taking quite a bit of time on heroics. Uh, their issue is entitled Escape Identifiers. Mm, absolutely no idea what that means. Um, those are two words. I can understand them individually. Uh, okay, uh, they're saying that according to this design, uh, we can provide non-ID identifiers for convenience. This could be essentially everything. I could, for example, query for a standard, say, standards ISO, blah, blah, blah. I propose to run URI escape on every identifier passed to the API. Um, okay, so this is also straddling the line between a bug and a feature request. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll treat this. Let's, let's click on what they're referencing. Uh, so inner agent is uh, GitHub org um, that just is created by Herokai, uh and its tools and docs for building and using HTTP APIs. That's where Heroics lives, um, and it's where they're documenting um, HTTP design. Oh, that's pretty active. Three days ago. Okay, so uh, according to non ID for convenience. Oh, I had the hiccups. Um, Non-ID. Okay, so at least we can update uh, here's and post. Uh, if you click Y while you're on a page, it'll give you the actual commit SHA. Um, so if even if this page moves later, then you'll still always be able to get back to this page. Um, so we'll at least, like if they had clicked, um, well, uh, yeah, if, uh, okay. Well, it's also super short. So I'm gonna, I'm just, just gonna copy the whole thing. Um, uh, that link no longer works um here's a good one that is linked locked uh to a commit um entire contents uh yeah sure it's it, it's it's visible um to anybody who clicks through but like Oh, um, it did work. Uh, it just has um, it has its own GitHub quotes, so we have to like escape the escaping. Um, does that work? Yeah. Okay. Support non-ID dereferencing for convenience. Wow, that's a mouthful. In some cases, it may be inconvenient for end users to provide IDs to identify a resource. For example, a user may think in terms of a Heroku app name, but the app may be identified as a UUID. In these cases, you may want to accept both an ID or a name. Uh, and yeah, this is what they're talking about. You can go to like service.com slash apps slash, you know, it could be www-prod is a name of an app, um, if that's unclear here. Uh, it could be the name of an app, or this might be the UUID. Do not accept only names to the exclusion of IDs. Uh, so that's what they're referencing here. And then, basically, I view this line as a bug, as a bug report. Um, which I guess I could just say that. There's a bug report. Um, if an ID or, so in this scenario, they're saying, hey, um, like imagine if there was a space for whatever reason, if the ID had a space in it, you know, if it was, oh, oh I've got it right here. If it was like, if it was this, um, this is not a valid URL. It needs to be escaped. Um, and so what they're referencing, what they're basically suggesting is calling like URI dot escape, um, on every single thing past it to this, 
which for if it's just a, um, you know, if it's just a string, great, sold, done. Um, if like if this would be the same, if this doesn't have the space in it, it'll be the same. Um, if it does have the space in it, then it would be whatever, whatever they actually said it here, percent two, maybe. Uh, I've got those keys somewhere. Um, yeah, so uh, partially just understanding what they've said, um, re-clarifying it's like, okay, uh, that this is a bug report. Um, now the other thing I'm, I want to think about, uh, for bug reports is if we fix this, could it break something else? Like if we automatically did this URI escape, could it, would it, it break something else? Um, and I, let's copy this. Like I could potentially see somebody abusing this, like, let's just say, uh, instead of www slash prod, they pass in www slash prod slash resources or like dinos slash web or something, pretending this is the Heroku API. Uh, I don't think that's a valid path, but like basically somebody could be, a, since we're not escaping um, currently, and I think we're just passing whatever raw value you give to us, uh, to heroics, um, you could do this, I think. And so you could be using this bug as a feature. Um, so even though it's a bug, even though I'm interpreting their, their comment as a bug, um, this is something to be aware of. Um, and so if we just changed it out of the box, I think that this would break backwards compatibility. Like, and you might be thinking, it's like, oh, well, that's silly. Like, why would somebody expect it to work? Why would somebody expect passing this blah, blah, blah to work? And it's like, m most people, it's just like the fact that it just does work <laughs> means it's supported. Uh, and whether or not it's expected, whether or not it's desired still means that um, that's the way it currently behaves. Uh, and so um, my next thought would be, are there ways we could mitigate it? Um, it's essentially like anytime somebody has a, says, oh, this behavior is not desired. Uh, you kind of have to think it's like, is there a context in which that behavior is desired? Uh, and so we could say something along the lines of, um, warning. We could explicitly warn people. Um, we could have some sort of, we could, uh, of like, Hey, you're providing a non, like, essentially, if you provide a slash or a space or something, like, we could, if, if, if the value of, um, <laughs> escape, uh, if the value of URI escape does not match the original string, like, provide a warning and say, hey, like, we're gonna make this change soon, um, or, like, use this flag to not enable this behavior, um, and so those are those are all different options. Like that is if you're wanting to preserve um, stability. So now I need to figure out how to respond and state that. Um, Um, so, uh, yeah, like also, like, I guess if this was a more recent one, I would, I would ask for like a re I would say, Hey, this sounds like a bug report. Can you give me a reproduction or, or maybe I might even take the next step and try to reproduce it. Like, um, I, now that I'm going through this, I'm not even, we might even already do this. We might even already URI escape and I just don't even know. Um, I might be spending a bunch of my time going down this thought path of, should we do this? Should we not do this? What's the values? What's the costs? What's the trade-offs? Is this stable? Is this not stable? 
when it might already be solved um, and we just don't even know. And that's that's also why it's like we we I just opened that other issue and it's like I wanted to give a reproduction so somebody else can come by and see if it's already solved. Like we've already seen once, um, I think in my first video on Heroics where something was already solved and then it's like, great, just close the issue. Um, Um, I know I'm misspelling this word wrong. I'm just going to let Grammarly really catch it for me. Um, would be backwards incompatible. Uh, so this is basically what I just said before. Um, even though this is this might not be supported or a valid use case, it might accidentally be used that way, and you are escaping would be backwards incompatible. Backward? Eh. I would want to ask uh, how we could detect on such cases and warn or provide some sort of stable opt-out interface, etc. Um Uh, is there a way to quickly generate and show your URLs that are not, I guess I want to hyphenate all these, are not URI escaped currently? Uh, this issue is very old, and I'm assuming the behavior you're describing still exists, but I currently don't have a way to verify it. So uh, this is basically just me asking for, hey, can you give me a reproduction? Um, which, if that's all you wanted to ask, that would still be helpful. It's like, hey, how do I, how do I see, it's like, most people, when they're writing these things, they're not thinking in terms of feature request or bug report. It's like, hey, if you're reading this and you think it sounds like a bug report, say this sounds like a bug report, but you need a reproduction. And that's still helpful. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep this open. Uh, these are all really long. Um, maybe not even super helpful. HTTP design. Okay, chunked encoding support. Some API returns data streams and chunked API is XCon supports this, but Heroics didn't support it. It would be nice could be eached. Um, so this is a feature, but you can, anytime you can frame a feature in terms of a bug report, it's more likely that you'll get it in. Uh, they're, they're framing it as a feature, but if we, instead you could turn around and say, hey, when I am um, returning a chunked, uh response i don't get the i don't get the behavior that i want um so i would ask the what's the behavior that happens when you currently send heroics a chunk response does it 
fail or error or uh, flee. Um, can you provide a an example app or repro to demonstrate this uh, behavior while um, repro to demonstrate this behavior. So I can verify the existing um, code base. Uh, Um, and since they're, they're referencing and something they're, they're saying XCon supports this, uh, it's like, great. <laughs> Can you send me an example? Again, it's 2014 issue, so probably they're not going to respond, but you know, hey, um, it's good to ask, good to ask now, because um, yeah, I mean, I chunked in coding, I, this, this seems like a reasonable thing to support. Uh, yeah, and even if you, even if you basically, you could write their source mods even if you don't know what they're talking about. Um, it's like, essentially it boils down to TLDR, could not reproduce, give me a, uh, some help. Could you... Okay. Um, how are we doing on time? 17 minutes. Let's keep going. Uh, validating request payload client side. Um, I can't see if it's possible for sure in default generated client wrong request payloads actually reach the server. Uh, since client already has the whole schema, it would be possible to verify request payload to fall back faster. Probably one wouldn't want to run this validation in production, not to waste resources on checking a schema on both sides, client server. Another question, does client validate responses from server? Uh, okay, how do I, again, um, this is a feature request that could also be framed as a bug report. Uh, if it was a bug report, then like even, I don't know, even a feature request, it's like, if you can give me, if you can show me, I need like as a maintainer, as somebody who wants to be a maintainer or wants to work with the code base, um, like show me what you're talking about. Uh, like I understand what they're saying here. I believe I understand and I'm going to show you, but like it's, it takes a lot of context, um, when you could also potentially add an example. So, um, Heroku API, uh, this is actually not what I want, but I want the platform reference and I know there's a link in here, API documentation. Oh, not, not what I want. API reference. There we go. Uh, so for instance, if you're making a request and let's say you are, um, we're not getting, let's say we're doing a post post. Um, well, <laughs> okay. Let's say you're going to create an, an add on. Um, so you make your post, you have to specify your add on ID or name. Um, and then 
you pass a parameter of plan. So what they're the what essentially what I believe they're saying, and they could have clarified this with a with an example, uh, is let's say that they're passing there's they're making this request and not passing in plan or they're they're misspelling it and they're calling it plans with the z or something or maybe they're passing in plan and something else like plan and size or type um and what they're what heroics is currently doing is just passing it on to the server which first of all that's what they're saying it's doing is that actually true is it true anymore i don't know cuz i don't have a reproduction um from them and then, uh, like, secondly, is that actually the desired behavior? Uh, what they want is, what they're asking for is is basically like a little clippy or something saying like, hey, I see you didn't include plan in here. This is going to fail. Um, mm, so that's, uh, yeah. That's and that's a bit of why it's a feature request as opposed to a bug report. Um, okay, let's see what everybody else has said. Uh, okay, we talked about stuff like that a bit. B JSON schema. Um, I don't think it is doing the validations on the client side request or responses, though it certainly could. Um, I will tend to agree that it would be really useful, but would probably be a good thing to have configurable so you could run it in dev staging, but maybe not prod. Um, Okay, basically, uh, Wes, uh, Gmus here, uh, is saying, ah, okay, <laughs> uh, is saying, um, like, hey, in, as you're developing, if you make it with plan, uh, and plan, and you, pla, plan, you forgot the A, let's say, you, and, um, it could just stop you. But, like, I don't know. If that's the case, if it's, like, configurable like that, it seems to me not super helpful. Um, okay, so I'm looking at these two files. Oh, great. Response validators, request validators. Looks like that is exactly... That is exactly... That is that is exactly logic that is needed to make these validations, but it is in committee gem, which is a set of rack middlewares, and because of it, depending on it, here and using its inner classes would be strange to me. Do you think it is a valid point to extract this logic somewhere else and reuse it here and in committee? Something along the lines of JSON schema support or JSON schema validators gem. Uh, okay. Yeah, so both neither of those are... Neither of those still exist. Uh, so let's... I think they probably got moved. Response validator. He says it's a middleware. Um, but then there's also this other one. Open API hyper schema. Love if these commented on what they are doing. Uh, validate success only. Check header. Response validation dot validate. Okay. Um, I think it's probably this one is what they're referring to. Well, let's, uh, let's make a commit link and link back to it. So it's like, Hey, we've done some arc archeological work here. Um, oh, request validator response validation. Um, Uh, okay, so Wes has looked at it, you know, wasn't super strong on it, wasn't super like, yeah, let's do that. I mean, he's like, eh, we've talked about it. Essentially, it sounds like they're saying 
this behavior lives somewhere, what if we could put it somewhere else that I could also use it? Uh, I mean, if it's true that it's just, it's this, like this file, like, I don't know, 59 lines of code, uh, it seems like it might be difficult to extract that to make it meaningfully useful. Um, and the fact that this has been open for five years, I'm going to be inclined to just go ahead and close this. Um, I mean, also, I think there's limited utility. Uh, if they could, like, even in the scenario... Like, they're... It sounds to me, and again, this could be clarified. I could ask for clarification. It sounds to me like they are saying the benefit of doing this is that we never have to hit the server with a bad request. It's like, hey, we know this is going to fail. We're just not even going to say it. Um, off the top of my head, I can think that uh, like this as an error guard could actually prevent you from... What if the JSON API hasn't been isn't kept in sync with the server for instance um in that scenario you could be making a valid request and it just like won't let you it's like hey this won't work and you're like but it will uh like the other if this doesn't exist it still fails right you just make a request to the server i don't I, my my gut is saying that this isn't a meaningful decrease in load on a server as a feature um, so for the amount of time and effort, like if this was implemented, does it have to be in heroics? Uh, eh, you know, probably, um, I think the other question would be, could you implement some sort of like a plugin interface so that you could add it, uh, to heroics and, and like, I don't know, asking somebody to do that work is a bit of like, uh, telling them to go screw off because nobody's going to do it. Uh, it's too hard, and, like, the chances that they would do it in a way that you would actually like and accept it is even, you know, smaller. So, yeah, all that is to say, I, I just don't think this is very valuable uh, or necessarily worth the amount of effort. Um, Okay, uh, I don't see a huge perf benefit of blocking requests before they reach the server if they don't meet the JSON uh, schema. Missing a word here. Uh, requirement, maybe? Maybe some sort of a debug or lint mode would be interesting. That is not what I wanted to click. Uh, this issue has been open for five years with no movement. Let's close it. If there's a very compelling future reason, then we can open a new issue or reopen this one. Boom. Uh, yeah, and in this scenario, if this was you, you can, again, you can always just say, I think this should be closed. I think we should close this. And that's just as, just as helpful. Whew. Okay. Wow. I'm going to stop this one. I don't know how many more of these I'm going to have to do. Uh, but I seem to be averaging about 10 minutes an issue. That one, that one went, a, I guess that was three issues. Yeah, that's about 10 minutes an issue. Okay. Um, and I've got 10 issues. That's uh, can't do the math. It's in what an hour and 40 minutes left. 
That seems low. Anyway. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, I'll see y'all around.